the Nikki Glaser podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello, here I am. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glaser podcast. I am in a hotel room in Los Angeles. I have nothing going on in my life right now. I was thinking I went to go journal this morning. Nothing that is like of note. And I was like trying to come up with some stuff to talk about today. I was journaling. I have been journaling every day, which is good. I like have been having pretty good dreams and I've been writing them down and stuff. And no one wants to hear that fucking shit. Not even my therapist. I was starting to like talk about my dreams two days ago when I saw her. And I could tell she was just like, even I'm bored with this and I know what they mean. You know, like it was just falling off of roller coasters. No, we got to stop with the dreams, I think. I mean, right? I, yes, Never. they mean I don't something. Hear it yes, there's ever. some symbolism to them, but like, I, I mean, it's a it's a trope in the the stand up comedy world that there's like a million comedians with the joke, or, or even in sitcoms. But like, no About one that ever no one wants to hear your dreams. Wants yeah. to hear your dreams. It's not interesting at all. There's only one time that dreams are interesting to the other person. And that is if there's sex or you're in it. If you're in it, I don't even think if there's. It's sex. like vacation photos. It's it's like someone, some oh. comedian, or maybe it was like uh, I think it might have been Dennis on Always Sunny said dreams are like people's photos. I don't want to see it unless there's sex or um, I'm in them. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear about right. you know something like that. It was like oh that's a good analogy because they're always yeah. such bullshit. They're always just you know there's no rules. It's like, oh, I saw this thing, and then my aunt was there, and then all of a sudden I was in Topeka, and it's like, who the There's fuck? There's no way is? to describe them. It's like a acid trip. It doesn't yeah. sound interesting to anyone else who like that's the same way I feel about people doing psychedelics and telling me about that experience, even though I do ask, mm. and I did like, um, I I was talking to someone about it. I saw a clip of Theo Vaughn the other night. It you know like YouTube just serves up what you need, and it was like Theo Vaughn describes the difference between DMT and ayahuasca. And he said that um, DMT is like being buried in a pinball machine that's like on and it's just going on and you're inside it, man. And it's like a double baller or what? I don't know how you, you know how Theo talks. And then he said, but ayahuasca was like your heart farts. <laughs> he was like, it really, it's, if you don't, if you want to ever know the difference between those two or have any, what, like, you just want to know what that it's like. It was a very, um, elucidating um you know description of both of the things to me because i've always gotten them confused i know i'll never do dmt those are great neil brennan Metaphors. told me <laughs> yeah oh theo is one of the best people to just talk about anything i mean he's one of my favorite people to just look up clips and just hear him talk he's he's one of the best talkers that will ever exist yeah. and um but I, what, I was just thinking about dreams. I recall my favorite Mitch Hedberg joke. One of my favorites is like, man, dreams, I, you know, I'm paraphrasing. Dreams are like bullshit, man. Like you could do anything. He was like, but most of the time it's just like, I'm building a shed with my landlord. You could do anything. Whenever and that's I'm on tour, all my dreams are just like, and then I'm packing my shampoo. And oh, I'm packing, packing is a crazy <laughs> one for me. I pack a lot in dreams. Um, anyway, so let's not talk about dreams. Anyway, been journaling a lot. Didn't I have nothing to talk about? So I'm just gonna throw it to you guys. What? Any? Well, we got a <laughs> I major love how you update. Cut us off, and then you're like, I have nothing. <laughs> no, I, I. Well, I, I had something. I always have something if I talk enough. But I really want to pitch it to you guys. Of like, what do you have? Major um, update. Major Ma- update. Oh, major what? update. That I'm sure the besties are all uh, curious to hear, and that yeah. is that the uh, the old rag. Yeah, it's somewhere delivered. around. I knew you were going to say that. The old somewhere rag around, yeah. has been delivered to Nikki. It has many stains on it. it. I told you it was not a good I rag. Didn't, I thought it was old. I didn't know it would have um, I don't know. microfiber from your glasses case. Well, it has microfibers of uh, murder scenes on it. Like, it's like, <laughs> it looks like you it's gave been it through to a Nikki? lot. It's vintage. Yeah, I asked for it. I liked <laughs> yeah. it. It says P- eye people or something on it. Vision and it's people. an old company. Uh, Vision it's people. an old eye care professional in the. And Mar- it's Bel- a great gift. Well, look, there's a so twist. How does that feel to part with it? Why is there a twist? I didn't even know I had it, so it feels nothing. I feel like uh, someone explained. Yeah, to he, me well, a dream. he he got it out of the wastebasket after I go. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, I thought it was in a special Ziploc that he carries around. <laughs> no, it was like in a it little. Was. It I was. I have a bag. But he threw it out on right, the well, show. Well, there's a twist. What's the twist? Oh no, you need it back. They're still open. <laughs> no, I went back into my bag. It was, it was much deeper than I had originally realized. Uh-huh. And I found 
another old rag (laughs) from the same place. I had two. That one looks better. It is a little better. Stiff. It's not stiff. It's no (laughs) very few stains. Do you want to swap? Okay. Yeah, I want I want that one. I don't know it what these stains so are. Better. They're like black. I don't know what that could be because I use these for my glasses. I can't believe you still have this stuff. And I can't believe that you went further through that bag. Like, the bag. do you have that much time on your hand? I don't think you do. No, I bag. don't. But you know You don't, what? man. I'll always make time for my rag bag. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Brian's been going to like... He's a, he's got a lot going on. He got a new mattress. Oh um, yeah, no, this which is, is like the dreams of. Yeah, it's like a. I want to hear about this just as much as I want to hear about people's dreams. But it actually is interesting because buying a mattress is such a fucking arduous process, and uh, he got a Tempur Pedic. Yeah, so right now yes. behind me is a Tempur Pedic uh, Breeze Lux Medium, and I gotta say, if anyone out there, any of the besties, please help me. I need your help, help because. Him. I got this Tempur-Pedic mattress. It costs like $6,000. And I know that there's a break-in period. I know that. But I just don't trust that there, it's going to work because I'm sitting Noah's on this raising mattress. raising her hand. It's Wait. much firmer than I thought it was going to be. And I want I, I want to sink in. And it's not sinking in at all. Brian, I understand what? your pain. Oh. We had the same exact thing. We spent like the most amount of money that we have ever spent on a piece of furniture. Mm. But uh, it became worth it. You just have to wait. It'll take like... Four months. No, that's unfortunately four months. That's past the return, and I can't not sleep for four months. That's past but the it, return it works, period. It works, and it will. Cha- it'll be a game changer. Is You'll never be able to a sleep on another mattress. Yes, ours is a tempered. Oh, oh, so you didn't. Did say, you, you buy the furniture. hybrid kind, or did you buy the like it's gonna let me sink into it kind? Because Brian, what he wanted out of the tempered pedic is that it forms to his body. But when he went to the showroom, he was talked into a hybrid of the forming to your body and the spring. And then he gets out of there and he gets the hybrid. And now it's arrived, and he goes, "Why didn't I just get the thing that I wanted? Which is like it just forms to your body." So which one did you get, Noah? Um, I cannot remember. I think we may have gotten the hybrid. I can get back you to see, you on this that. This is what this is the, also the problem with mattresses. I've asked almost every single person in my life what kind of mattress they got, mm-hmm. and either it's like Nikki's answer is like I have a shitty mattress. I don't give a shit about it. I want a new one, and so that's not very helpful. Or it's nope. or it's I have a great mattress. I love it. It's the best mattress in the world. What kind is it? Oh, I don't. I don't remember. I guess I'll look it up, <laughs> and then I look up the receipt, and it's just oh, I found the receipt, but it just says. Uh, you know, it just says like mattress good. And it's like, well, what the fuck is that? Is it medium? Is it firm? Is there springs? It's medium. It's medium. I get that. I know that for sure. I just don't know which design it it? is. Uh, like a year ago or something. Were you just as like disenchanted with it at first and like, what, what, what a waste of money. And did you both have a night four months in where you were like, it's working. Like, uh, was it (laughs) just at the same time? Yeah. Then they made love. (laughs) Yeah, we had just like aggressive sex on it to break it in. But before that, <laughs> to we <dancing>. were... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really worried because it was so... We were dropping like so much money on it. Yeah. And for my whole life, I heard Tempur-Pedic is the one. It's the best. And mm-hmm. then when we finally, after getting it delivered, and it was a commitment to put it in the house, we got the little platform and everything. And mm-hmm. um, we were just like, this is a lot more firm than I remember at the store. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. I had like, when I checked, it was exactly medium firmness. And, um, I was just like, we're going to have to return this and go through the whole oh, process. And I was Jesus. really like, just so agitated over that. Um, but right at, like, as it got to like the four or five month period, all of a sudden I was like, this, ma- this mattress is so comfortable. We're not returning Is it just because your will has been broken down or does something happen <laughs> in the biochemistry of the mattress? Okay. I have been sleeping on a shitty mattress because I'm at my dad's house and my back and my neck are in so much pain, like pain that I don't feel anymore because I sleep. Well, how many days have you been sleeping on your dad's pain. mattress? Just I've been stay here for, for another three months. <laughs> Twenty three days. Twenty. That's enough to get used to it. Wow. Yeah. Shitty yeah. mattress. You can't. You can't it's, get. It away might be that. your pillow. I had a Tempur Pedic pillow, which I got addicted to, mm. and then I just gave it to Matt because he had a really bad neck once. I'm like, I'm my neck's fine now. Take this. And now I'm like, I, is that a scam? A Tempur Pedic pillow? I, mean, I think I'm fine. I don't know. I think the pillows are really expensive, pillows. and there's a million different types. And so far, I've tried almost every one of them. And I'm not sold on the pillows. I'm not sold on the mattress. I don't know. I think 
I mean, I wrote an episode of Adam Ruins Everything on mattresses where we oh, literally said, wow. yeah, I wrote a whole episode on mattresses where we literally How'd they get you then. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I literally said <laughs> in this, I wrote this on a script and it was said on television. Do not spend thousands of dollars on a mattress. It's a scam. I wrote that. And then I went ahead <laughs> what? and I spent thousands Ryan, of dollars wait, on a why mattress. Why did you write that? What was your finding? Will you like tell us what, what the gist of the episode was and why that, that, that's true and what you should do instead of spending thousands of dollars? Um, studies have shown that there is very little difference in customer satisfaction between after you reach a certain threshold in mattresses. So like you don't want to buy like a $500 mattress, like the mattress Noah's probably sleeping on. But once mm. you pass like $1,000, there is no difference in customer satisfaction between a $1,000 mattress and a $10,000 mattress. It's like, it's like, you know, that thing where you make a certain amount Happiness. of money. Yeah. If yeah. You, once you pass that threshold, it doesn't matter if you make $200,000 mm. or $400,000. It's like all the same. Well, that's how yes. it is with mattresses. And a lot of the materials that are in mattresses are made by the same three companies you know, that, yes. that's like the coils. Same with eyeglasses. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what you say it's about like eyeglasses. canned good, canned tomatoes. Like I told you guys. Coming from the same factory. Yeah. It's just the label. Or like uh, halal meat. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, the meat that's <laughs> spinning and you're like, well, that doesn't look like real meat. Guess what? It's not it's real not. meat. It's mostly sawdust and breadcrumbs, you freaks. You're eating a bunch of shit. All right. Yes, well, the I mattress. I just heard that the other day. It's vegan. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Can eat that meat now. And then um, also, there's like a bunch of shady practices that the mattress. What made stores. you go against everything you know and wrote? Like, what have you explored? Like, what made you? I'm desperate. Do it? I, you, I, I was going to guess pain. pain. Yeah, pain. well, the the pain is a great motivator, and I I was uh, grinding and clenching my teeth at night and uh, destroying my teeth, and I learned that I have to sleep on my back in order to. Uh, not do it as much. And my the mattress I used to have, which also cost $5,000, was um, too firm. It was way too firm. I couldn't sleep on my back and too many pressure points. So I slept in an Airbnb where there was a, a memory foam mattress and I slept all night on my back. And I was like, I think I need a memory foam. So I, you know, Why even you though- get that exact one? Well, I thought about it. We contacted the Airbnb owner and they said- <laughs> Of course you did. Yeah, and they said I was like this was a, this was it wasn't the best mattress I've ever slept in, but it was good enough. And they said it was a six hundred dollar mattress from Wayfair. It didn't even have a name. Oh my god! Right? Yeah. So, and you, so you weren't able to find the model. No, I was, but I was like, okay, yes, that mattress was good. But that's not but, past the thousand dollar point that you need to feel good. And also, that, that mattress is everything. probably not going to last very long. It's probably going to be like sagging after a year, and then like I don't want to go okay. through this again. So I at least was like, let me go find a memory foam mattress. That's why I did it. And then I just went to the store and I'll tell you what, those, I mean, they have, a, they have all these things in place that make you buy the mattress. They, they offer three years, zero interest financing. They always have a sale. It's ending tomorrow. They have the mattress yes. salesman who's like, oh, I'll just leave you alone and let you sleep on it. And, and, then, and then they come back five minutes later and they're like, how was it? And then they offer you the 90 day return policy. So you can return. So it's like, oh, is this even really a purchase? So then you just walk out of the store. All of a They're sudden, so nice. you spent six grand on a mattress and you owe Wells Fargo your life savings. And now you're sleeping mm -hmm. on a brick. Man. I have a solution. What? And, and a, a hopeful anecdote. I'll tell you the hopeful anecdote. No, I'll tell you the solution. Okay. No, I'll tell you the hopeful anecdote. Okay. <laughs> So, no solution. Yeah, let's do the solution okay, solution. First. <laughs> I was just kidding, but okay, yes. <laughs> pillow top mattress. Just spend 30 bucks on a pillow he top. Did it. You Wrong. did? Ah. Yeah, he beat you okay. to it. Yep, sorry. Okay, then. Should have told that last. What's your um, <laughs> What's the anecdote? <laughs> I wanted, Matt and I were ring shopping for wedding rings, mm -hmm. and it was annoying, and we'd finally, he found a company online where they send you a bunch of ring samples, you try them on, you figure out your like exact Warby size. Yeah. And we decided, he decided on one. I was like, mm, I wasn't, didn't know I had a preference for rings, but these were not the specifications I would have decided. I was thinking round, classic. For him or a, you? For him. Like a bright, he's like, I don't know what to do, babe. Which one? I'm like, I don't care. Pick one you like. And then he picks one he likes. And I was like, whoa, I don't think I like that. that but I, yeah. And, um, 
I didn't even know what I liked, but I realized, I guess I like a classic men's wedding ring, kind of bright, like shinier gold, which is not mm-hmm. what I would think I would like. Rounded edges, Blinking. not super, <laughs> not super thick, not super thin. Um, anyway, he picks like a matte pale gold. It's like not shiny at all. And it's a little thinner than I'm used to. And it's got square edges. So it looks like a little more industrial. I was like, I don't know if I like that. It's kind of nineties or something. Anyway, I don't, I don't say what I want. Cause I'm like, I don't even know what I want. Just let this guy choose. Mm-hmm. It's his fucking ring. Yeah. And then it comes and he's wearing it. And I was just like, I think I hate it, but in my head, he doesn't even know this. For two days, I'm like, I think I fucking hate it. And I know there's a return period and it's like free exchange or whatever. And I was just like, should we exchange it? And I just bit my tongue. And now, whatever, you know, a month or two months after we had bought those rings, I fucking love it. It looks so cool on him. It looks, oh, I'm like, good. that is the coolest ring I've ever seen. Like every day, I don't know what it is. I've just gotten used to Weird. it, but it just looks, it's like very matte. I can't explain it. Mm. It looks, it looks cool. So I'm glad I kind of listened to the tiny, tiny voice in my head that was like, eh, just let, let this alone. Yeah. Don't try to micromanage this. So this that's is a, another hopeful. reason why marriage, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, it's a, yeah. here's another thing. I can't commit to a ring the rest of my life, like a piece of jewelry that I have to wear forever. And also, who cares? Like, About were you just what? mad that you were going to like see his ring and always just feel like, oh, God, it's ugly. Like the rest of your life. Was that your fear yeah. or that people would think your husband's lame if they saw it? Because he likes no. it. So what does it matter? It's just like and you more like, don't. I'm very much into like how like I get a nice. lot of joy from the aesthetics of things. So Mm -hmm. like I can just stare at my own, I don't fucking know, like a a chair that I bought and just be like, God, No, when you had your nails done, you were like, I can't (laughs) stop looking at them. Are they still long? (laughs) No, no, I cut them off. They're still, they're like growing out, but I chopped them off so I could play guitar. Right. But the weird plasticky thing, the extension is still glued on there. Right. And then how, what happens with that? You have to have it like removed. I forget. Eventually I'm going to just have it removed, but I'm too lazy to go. And right now it's actually making the guitar picking sound really cool because they're so thick. Oh, that's nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, What do you feel about your spray tan? Do you miss it? Because mine, I missed it, but I got a strange, uh, first of all, it did ruin my favorite white pants. I just got these and it ruined the bottoms of them. Um, I went to the foot massage place and they they moved the, my pants up. They hiked them up to my knees and then, you know, they were lotioning me up and it was hot that day in New York. And then when they were all done, I'm like, oh, horrified. My spray tan is like there's a ring around my little white pants. And I was like, fuck. Why can I, I get tons of spray tan on towels and like makeup and spray tan? And they are always white at hotels like they maybe they throw out the towels because they they're like, them. this is ruined. Like, how do why can't you just bleach things the way hotels do? I Why will, can we not do but it? But this is three three washes later. And oh. I, so I'll just bleach them. It's almost back to normal, but it was annoying. I miss the spray tan, though, although I did develop a weird dot on my leg that is still there. Do you ever get these? Age it's spot? It's almost gone. No, age I thought it was that. Melasma? Because they, it's, no, they like definitely highlight your age spots when you get spray tan. See that little freckle right there? Or yeah. Not? So that was really dark. And that came like the night after my spray tan. I woke up with a super dark, dark, dark thing. And it felt like a scab. So I'm like, oh, it's just spray tan collected in a weird spot. But it's taken three weeks to go away. Do you ever get those? I would never notice that on my back. <laughs> <laughs> not, just not a weird a dark years. dot on your leg? You're, you're very self-aware. I would not. No, I mean, like, yeah, no, I, I, I have... People are constantly worried about my spray tan more than I am. Like, just makeup artists and people are just like, oh, it's like on the back, it's patchy. I'm like, because it, I got a spray tan. Like, people can probably look at me and understand her armpits are going to be white because she got a spray tan and it was a shitty one because she doesn't like, because people go, why don't you get custom ones? Because I just go in a booth every single time, no matter what the level of a thing, appearance I'm making. And a booth is just like for people who are, Maybe going to a wedding that weekend. They're not in the wedding, but you were supposed to get a custom one for like the real good spray tan, but I will not do it. And do you know why? Because you don't want to wait. Exactly. People think it's like, it's because you don't want to be naked in front of someone. It's also a lot more expensive. It is not any of those things. It's because it takes too fucking long. What happens in a booth? 
a booth you sex, go in and it just like sprays you naked she goes yes. down on you then she's yeah <laughs> it's a glory Why do you hole think booth. i like <laughs> you go in you take off all your clothes I don't do any lotion barriers because there's a spray, there's like a, a wet wipe in there that you just, afterwards, you just wipe all the places that you don't want spray tan on. You don't need to do lotion barriers. It's stupid. You go, And I've been doing these for hundreds of years. And so you but go in. the palms in, of your hands are a little bit orange. Did you not do it? No, they're not. Yeah. It's just looking that way. Like if oh. I see them up close, they're not. They really aren't. My hand is orange. This is orange, but this, I know it looks orange, but it's not for some reason <laughs> when I look do at it up d- close. Are you supposed to do your armpits too? I forgot. She had me do it, but I was so self-conscious. Yeah, I blacked if, out. But who is seeing your armpits? And who is going to go, <gasps> I would definitely look white. Like who cares? No, they're who? supposed to be white. Exactly. But like, I just don't get like, can't people just understand that there's going to be like a little bit like, There are people with vitiligo and everyone's not like, oh my God, burn her. You know, like who gives a shit if it's a little spotchy? I got a wrap, but uh, uh, we're going to go to break. What? I say that. I I don't know. That's just me though. What? Burn people. They have spots. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just disgusted by everybody. So you get naked, you go into a booth. It tells you, I mean, depending on the, like, this is, I want every girl to know this because spray tans will elevate you so much. And everyone's so scared of going in a spray tan booth. It will not just go at a low level, but I always go to the highest level no matter what, because it's so disappointing when it doesn't show up at all. And it will never be so high that you're like, I look insane. At least for me, I'm, there's not enough tan I could be. So you go in, you press a button, you stand like this, then you have one arm like this, then you have one arm like this, then you stay from behind, and then they do two, and then they go drying phase, and it takes five minutes, and then you're dry by the time you step out. You maybe like dance around a little bit, take a picture for your boyfriend because you will look super tan and super hot, and the lighting's really low, and it looks it's always a great time to get like a sexual, and you're like kind of mm-hmm. wet looking, and that's always a good look. Send that off to him, he'll validate your existence, and then. <laughs> You leave and you're fucking tan and it's great. Well, yeah, you're a pro. That makes sense. If I had had more than like five spray tans in my life, I'd booth it up too. I'd be like, I got this. But why don't, don't you just trust me, me and just go in a booth? Because it's, there's nothing well, that can I'm go wrong learning. in a booth. I'm still learning how to also, do it. Like don't all the angles. waste that top spray because it starts spraying at your head for tall people. And especially if you're a shorty, <laughs> put your arms up and follow it down and then hit the pose where it would be. As Chris so Convey once it. said... Get, she just can't handle what? the booth. Uh, what? <laughs> he said that. Was, it was funny. <laughs> There's a writer's strike. You should stop. <laughs> that, I like that. I laughed oh, out the, loud. He can't handle the... Oh, you that's can't the handle truth? The booth. She can't handle the booth. <laughs> Who did you say said that? I couldn't Chris hear Chris Convey. He said that? Uh, Chris yes. Convey said it in a, in, a, in a very appropriate moment. I laughed out loud. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then that makes sense. God, I miss him. <laughs> that really He's made me dead. miss him. Yeah. I feel we we don't talk on the phone when we're apart, so I kind of feel like he is. We'll uh, we'll talk more about all of this and and also less when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. I'm okay. guessing that I when Chris said she just can't handle the booth, I was talking about a spray tan booth. <laughs> no, you weren't there. It was uh, we were driving to the oh. Ludo concert, and there's that parking lot outside of the concert venue. And there is a parking attendant lady in a booth and she was, she kind of like gave us a hard time because Chris was like trying to park in the special parking spots because, you know, he's like associated with the he's concert special. and they gave us Needs. a hard time. Then we went to go get dinner and we came back and I pointed out, oh, the uh, parking attendant lady isn't there anymore. And then he goes, I guess she just couldn't handle the booth. That's very clever. Yeah. <laughs> And That's I good. Out loud. Yeah, that does make me. It's good. Yes. You know, he <laughs> he said it so fast too. Right. He's very quick. Yeah. I'm very. That's why I love listening to his radio show because I'm reminded of how fucking fast and, and funny and quick he is mm-hmm. in many ways. But he does. I mean, that's a pun. Some people are nauseated by them, but that's a good one. No. Yeah. Yeah. People are nauseated by bad puns. You know, yeah, or, or ones where the person is really proud of themselves for oh, coming up I with something that. that is Don't not do that hard, and then go, huh? You know, like like the yeah, air. and you wait. It is interesting how some comedians' minds you can tell by hearing their set they cannot help writing puns. It's like completely puns involuntary. It's just good. how their brains work. Like Mark Norman's new special, full of full of puns. Yeah. Oh yeah. You Did know? you watch the whole thing? I watched half of it. Um, but uh, he's so clever and he... That's always my question. Him. Did you get through it all? And There's literally no comedian I can get through it all. 
I love Mark and I love he Mark. reminds me of like a funny grandpa crossed and it's weird because he's like uh, a young good looking guy but yes. he's got that grandpa voice and some of the jokes are very like dirty grandpa <laughs> so it's cute I watched he's him very on wholesome 1.5 times the speed last night I couldn't sleep I was like oh I'll check out Mark's new special soup to nuts it's on Netflix Mark is one of the best you know joke writers and but I was listening to him actually on Theo Vaughn's podcast again a YouTube clip popped up and he was talking about how and Thea was saying man like I was laughing out loud so hard and it's just it's you're the perfect comic to go see on a date because there's you never have to worry if she's having a good time because there's no time to ever check in on like is she enjoying because it? it's just rapid fire it was something about that and he was like mm. yeah I hate silence I hate it I don't want <laughs> silence up there and I was like oh my god I relate to that so much he's like some comedians can just like take their time like wh why would you ever do that like how could you risk that and um I really liked hearing some it just feels validated when you hear someone that you admire say something that you have felt your whole life and um oh yeah, yeah he's he's just a rapid fire guy and has yeah tons of puns but like um yeah I got I listened to it at 1.5 times the speed which is insane because he already <laughs> talks so fast <laughs> but it's so good and I'm I'm just doing it bite sized because I was getting kind of sleepy at the time I watched and I want to I want to finish it up uh, at some point when I have time in my yeah. life because can't wait to watch right that now. one it's so good it's so good there even are some the title is old soup to nuts it's funny yeah. <laughs> yeah and I love he you know he always on Conan he uh I, I, it was the first time I heard him do it on TV, but he's, you know, at the end of a set, he goes, thanks, I'm Kevin Hart. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like the fun, but they introduce him as Kevin Hart on this. Please give it up for Kevin Hart. And he looks <laughs> I know, he's been doing that a long time. I was like, I've heard this. It's there's so a, good. There's some comedians who are like, really sit in the silence and they, they usually have a stool that they can actually sit no, on. No, thank you. And I, and the industry fucking eats up these That's people. the custom spray tan of comedians. Like, come on, let's let's speed this up. And they do love it. You know why? Because to do that, you have to be so fucking confident. You have yeah. to be a narcissist. Oh, 100%. And people love narcissists. Yes. They are it would be incredible to be superpower. one, honestly. It's a superpower. It really is. Like, I kind of wish I was, and I'm not talking about having na narcissistic traits like we all diagnose our boyfriends with. This is, <laughs> this is like someone who is a pathological, just, uh, you know, um, personality disorder. They have narcissism. They are an, a full blown narcissist. The sign and it's of not a narcissist that frequent. is that if at any point anything, De deduces them not deduces them uh, degrades them or uh, points out a flaw in any way they cannot accept that and they will fight against that in, in, in the extreme yes that's the that's the and sign of a narc they cannot admit any type of flaw at all and so every yes. time that they, if they make a mistake they'll gaslight you that they didn't do it if they if someone points out a flaw they will just decimate them and and completely discredit them they're fascinating them. They, because they, like someone calls it comes them a from transphobe a deep, they'll do like a whole special maybe about how they're not <laughs> <laughs> if yes <laughs> if they are deeply i don't know that Chappelle is a narcissist like at that level i think he has narcissistic traits because i think every comedian kind of has to to get up there and be like you should listen to what I'm talking about. That wasn't about. an original thought. I heard it from one of his best friends. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, again, long pauses, hours on stage. The, he's he's checking some of the boxes. But the thing I is, narcissists, narcissists don't even mind to be called narcissists. That's kind of my favorite thing about them because they're like, there's they see nothing wrong. Why would they wouldn't take that as an insult because they don't have anything wrong with them. So they're like, yes. that's the way to be. And also they're impervious to ever changing. No, it's the only it's one of the only I can't say it's the only because I don't know everything, but um, I think I do. Uh, the <laughs> it's it's impervious to you can't fix a narcissist because you have to see a fault in yourself to be able to go, I want to change and they will not do that. So that's fascinating. Impervious. To it therapy. would be great to be one. Yeah, but, um, because they will never struggle because they don't admit to themselves. They can't even have the, the I don't think they have any self-awareness to ever be sad about what they are because they're the best. But it does come uh, ultimately subconsciously from a deep fear of, of insecurity and not being enough. But it doesn't matter that it does. And that doesn't make you feel better if you're dealing with a narcissist to know deep down they're sad because they're not. They actually don't feel that subconscious thing at all on any right. level. They like, are the best. 
And I just kind of, I want to be one. <laughs> I do want to be, there's things I want to be. And sometimes I kind of wish I was a sociopath or a psycho or a, like a narcissist psychopath. But I think so, they're like unhappy. They're deeply unhappy. Many narcissists do they're kill not. themselves. They do kill they themselves. They do? Yes. It's, a, it's common that a narcissist uh, or a borderline oh. will kill themselves because... If once the mask breaks down, if at any point somehow you get through that mask and all of the tricks and all of the things that they do to deflect against introspection don't stop working, and if any little tiny flaw comes through, they cannot handle it. They get extremely depressed, angry, violent even. And so like mm. sometimes like even if it's just like a narcissist gets a gray hair and it's like something they can't control and it's just like there's no denying it like sometimes that that can like eat away at their soul and until they you know can't take it anymore Whoa. i mean okay, just, i didn't know that there's i heard from a it's therapist like a blatant thing. he's like don't worry about this narcissist in your life killing themselves because they were always threatening suicide he's like narcissists don't commit suicide they talk about it a lot or threaten it a lot but they don't but borderlines do. Maybe that therapist was wrong, though. I did see him walking in the street with a paper cup, very disheveled, many years later. And I was like, oh, uh, I don't think he did so well in life. I mean, you I've said read your therapist <laughs> he, walking he, homeless in the street. He was Jesus. either homeless or very near there. And I was like, oh, my God. He might have had like, dementia a lot. or something. Yeah, he, he would always be like, don't bother paying me. <laughs> like, I don't know how he paid his rent. <laughs> there were many months I saw him and he's like, don't worry about paying me. I think what? he just enjoyed spouting off about stuff. <laughs> anyway, he said narcissists don't kill themselves. I don't know. I mean, I've read a bunch. Of, I've read like every book there is about narcissists <laughs> and borderline and personality disorders. And frequently they say narcissists kill them. Borderlines kill themselves too a lot. But yeah, it's my just, guy didn't know what he was talking about, maybe. I mean, maybe it's true. You. Nobody really knows. I just want a disclaimer is that what? these the a these all of these diagnose diagnoses and labels, it's like everybody's different. Even if you're a narcissist, you might be different than another narcissist. These are just general things. Although I will say that if you're the they frequently exhibit the same behaviors and like sometimes people will be in a relationship with a narcissist or borderline, and I can predict exactly how they're gonna act and what they're gonna do in almost every situation. So I don't know. There's something to the diagnoses, but um, what's the first thing you hear from someone that's kind of like clueless that they're dating someone with borderline that you're like, oh, telltale sign. Like, has there been moments where you hear something and you're like, I just want to inform you, this might be the case here. Someone who might be listening that's like dealing with something that they don't even know would be the you just know it. Someone like you that? just know it in your gut that they are lying to you. You just know that they you can't trust what they're saying. If they're a borderline, then not only can you you just know in your gut that they don't actually love you, even though that they act like it, but you, yeah. but you know that in your gut. But also, to a borderline versus a narcissist is like a borderline um, will frequently not be able to handle any discussion about anything that's wrong with the relationship and um, have outbursts of mania and also. Um, anger and can frequently switch from being really amazing to really mean really fast like ding 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 unusually ding. cruel for any human being to be and you're like i can't believe you just said that to me and then you know maybe a week later i'll either deny that they said that they'll say you took it the wrong way or they you're will overly sensitive yeah yeah or they will not even remember that they said that so it's like Stuff like or that double happens. Down and be like, but it's true. But <laughs> here's how you don't get into that. Here's how you don't get into that situation. If you get into a relationship and for the first month you believe this is too good to be true, they're just love bombing you. They're doing everything you want. There are no problems. It seems like their personality is like meshing absolutely perfectly with your personality. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They are doing that on purpose to trick you because they don't have a personality and all they know how to do is to mimic your personality and give you exactly what you want so that you accept them. And once you accept them into your vulnerable heart, they will turn on you because they can't get too close to you. Well, you know, here's the thing. I got to put a little blame on the person that falls for this stuff because... And I'm not saying I do I do everything I do so many things so wrong all the time. 
But if someone loves you really soon and is just like, I don't know, there's just something about you. I just, I, who, someone who loves you after knowing you for a week, don't you know that they don't know you yet? And so they're kind of full of shit. I guess I think I'm coming at this from a perspective of, I don't really love myself. So I'm suspicious of anyone who does in the first place, even after knowing me a long time. So I think my low self-esteem has kind of protected me from these kinds of freaks because I have been love bombed at some points in the beginning of things with certain guys. And I'm always like, where, where is this coming from? Like, How do you have this information? We have not spoken enough for you to have formed this opinion about me yet. And I'll say, because I remember one guy just saying like, you're so interesting. I've been thinking about you nonstop. I love the way your mind works. And I'm like, we've texted and DM'd a couple times. There's, and I go, are you watching a special of mine or something? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can let that slide. But then there were things like, I can't wait to have, I remember one guy, was the I've told Brian this recently. I was telling the story to some friends of ours and but he was the hottest guy I've um one of the hottest people I've ever seen in my life. And I was like talking to him almost kind of romantically. We're feeling it out. And then early on he was like, I can't wait to have Sunday snuggles with you. <laughs> and I, it, not only does that disgust me on just a I just don't want to I don't like calling anything that, but I also was like, why do you want to snuggle with me already? That's a really intimate thing that you do. I can understand wanting to fuck me already. I'll let that slide. Like, I'm not going to be total. I'd be grossed out by someone saying that. But I understand that fucking really doesn't have to be predicated by like an intimate connection. But Sunday snuggle sound like you do. And that sounds like something I have to maybe start that that phrase with you as well. Like that sounds like something he ma- made up with another girl and is just like, ah, oh, every girl knows about yeah. Sunday snuggles. You're and, right. um, but I just was like, you don't know me well enough to want to snuggle me. We've never even met. We've never <laughs> touched. We've never looked each other in each other's eyes in person. So why would you want to do this with me? And it turned me off so much. Wait, but you were down to fuck? No, no, no. But if he would have said something like, I can't wait to be in the same room as you and like grab you or what, like I would have understood like the, the sexual <laughs> desire, you can want to, men can want to have sex with anyone without seeing Anything. them. Anything. And so can many women. What was it? Anything. Anything, yes. Um, But they, but son, I just, I don't know. I, and then there was this other guy that was one time kind of love bombing me of like, you're so intriguing and like, I just can't get you out of my mind. And we had barely talked. And I said, how many siblings do I have? And he was like, what? And I was like, I, if you like, you seem to know me so well and be so intrigued. Do you want to, do you know how many siblings I have? And he was like, I have no idea. And I was like, I think you need to know that before you're like <laughs> desperately uh, yearning for me in this intellectual way. Or like you, th- you are, you're talking about like, you know me really well. You don't know even mo- most like, banal thing um Good and then job. he you're said like the dad on love is blind season whatever when they were in seattle remember what's her name's dad was like how many siblings does she have or do that's you a great question know? to know yeah. if someone knows you it's yeah. just a, a that's a first date question that should get out of the way and not that you should retain that information on the first date maybe you'll need refreshers i i even with my friends need to be like how many what sibling are you like it's it's fine but down someone professing how much they're into you and how much they're ready to like move forward. They should know that already. Like they should want to know those things about you. So anyway, he, he was like, Whoa, you just schooled me. He was like, you're (laughs) so right. That's so good. I'm going to put that in this script I have because I'm writing about this narcissist (laughs) who all he does is talk about himself. And I needed some turning point where he's revealed to be one. And I think it's great if the other character says, how many siblings do I have? And I go, Wait, okay, you still don't know how many siblings I have. And you just took my idea and made it your own. And it was like, it. that just like, uh, is there any, have you guys been love bombed early on? And will you tell me the other side of it where you don't really care if he knows that stuff about you? Or maybe they're just so good at acting like they, this is the first time it's happened to them and they it's love at first sight. I mean, there's arguments for that as well. I mean, I, I kind of believe in love at first sight. So why wouldn't I believe in the idea of someone loving me immediately? Well, I'll intimately. speak for an early experience. Uh, I got to San Diego. I didn't know anybody. I was a new DJ on the radio there. I was 25. So I really had no friends. And then I met this guy and he was just like, 
he said kind of all the right shit like right away like and and i'm it's the same thing with people in cults like how do intelligent self-aware people fall into a cult like so many mm. it's not like everybody's a ding dong no but it's no, usually not. you're in a vulnerable point in your life it's not like your personality is like the type that would get into a cult it's usually a, a finite moment in your life that you're either alone changing jobs or in some transitional period maybe you're you just had a breakup or whatever, somebody died, and you're kind of longing for something or searching for something. I think I wanted connection and friends. And this guy was like, whoa, you are fine. And which I didn't like at all. But then he was like, I'm going to like, I want to be, I want to like marry you. And I'm such a psycho romantic that I was like, whoa, maybe this is it. This is the guy. I'm not, I'm not opposed to that actually. Uh, so I first, guess I'm, first meeting someone being yeah, like, I'm like, going to marry you. <laughs> well, like just because you hear of the story because I'm a romantic too. And you hear of the stories of guys being like calling their mom being like, I met the girl I'm going to marry tonight. And then it yeah. is. It, it, yeah. Little do you know that guy says it about every single woman he meets. So it's bound to happen once and the story will pay off. You know, another but, red flag like Brian was listing when they want to hang out with you every day, male or female, heterosexual, n- you know, not. um it, it, or same sex friends, whatever. If someone wants to hang out with you every single day, they say it's a red flag. That was me with you in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, but we had dinner every night for like four nights in a row, and and it I wasn't done more. <laughs> 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 me too. No, but, it was um, like we yeah, were both we, in vulnerable positions. <laughs> well, I said no, he was fine. Well, you can love bomb in <laughs> friendships also, but like the the key yeah. the key is. Um, you didn't at some random point just turn on Anya and start decimating her entire yeah. being, being as cruel as humanly possible to destroy her. Yeah, and I've had that with two female friends. One developed borderline personality as a result of very hard times and drug addiction, and she was diagnosed with that later. I don't think you have to be born with it. I might be wrong. And then the other female friend, I just didn't know that well. And we, I think I was in another, I had just gotten out of a breakup and she was like very um, knowledgeable about stuff, much older than me, kind of took me under her wing. I had always thought she was very like fascinating, almost like the Oprah of uh, this one friend community I had. And, um, and then, yeah, she f- exploded on me one day in such a rage, but thank God I had, Sort of what you were talking about, Nikki, like this baseline value system that was like, I'm not, no, 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 no. Like, this isn't I'm a match for me. <laughs> no, That's no how I it was just like, like you with the guy suspicious. being like, I want to be with you, but he doesn't know your sibling's name. I was just like, you don't talk to me like, no one talks to me like this. Like, I don't have out, I don't have drama on the street. Like, she did it on the street and was like, oh. you're the controlling and <laughs> it was insane. Brian, you've read the books why do they snap like this is it because of the, there's like you said there's something that happens that they can't control and it like breaks their oh, psyche uh, it, or what they're always trying to get something what are you going to get out of screaming at someone on the street why do they snap like is this a it's going against what they want which is like survival and to like feed off of people it often pushes people away what would be what why do they do that it depends on the situation so if like you're a borderline in a relationship and then you spend the first uh several months or even maybe up to like a year i mean i can't imagine having a year of love bombing and then having it turn but they'll be love bombing you and love bombing you and love bombing you and then um all of a sudden it the borderline will feel like they are too close to you and they can't be too close, but they also don't want to be too far away. So they love bomb you to get in there. They really want to get in there because being far away is bad for them. And they don't want to be alone. That's for sure. And then if you get, they get too close, they all of a sudden get uh, anxiety about being too close and they need to do something to push you away. So that's when they'll turn on you. It's black and white thinking. Um, where they'll just all of a sudden you go from I love you so much to you're the devil and I hate you because there's something about being that close that's scary because I mean if you want to get into like their childhood trauma or whatever it's because when they have so borderlines are made from trauma I don't know exactly but it's 
Definitely, you know, some people say that like it's a little nature nurture. Some people say quote. that like they don't. Nobody knows why, but some people it's like say bunions. Yeah, it's like bunions. <laughs> people say it's hereditary, and I think it's it's always caused by shoes. Yeah, yeah. Like some people say, like you can become a narcissist just because you were held too much as a baby, or you can become um, oh a borderline, or because you because you weren't held enough weren't as a baby. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, but it sounds like they're both uh, anxious and. Um, avoidant attached. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so people with, of that. So people with borderline uh, have dealt with every time they get close or have a close relationship, they um, get hurt, and their whole existence is to avoid that pain. At the same time, they probably felt like they didn't get enough love um, from people they cared about, like their parents, and so they. That's why they love bomb is because they try to become the perfect person that will receive this love. But then they get scared because they're like, well, now that I have this love, I'm afraid that I'm going to get hurt and damaged, so I'm going to push you away. So then they turn on you because the best way to protect yourself from love is to convince yourself, I don't love this person anymore. In fact, that person's a fucking devil who I hate, who stinks like shit I would never want to have sex with in in the rest of my life. In fact, if this person died, I'd be happy. Like, that's literally what they convince themselves of. I have traces of this, I think. (laughs) I don't ever blow up at the person, but privately, I... When I am, but when I feel anger towards someone, it turns into like I want to cut it off. I hate them. Mm-hmm. Like I can go to hate so fast, and I always talk myself out of it. And luckily, I don't ever say it to the person because I'm too scared of. I'm always thinking ahead and going like, "What if I regret this?" So I never actually put into action these. You things. might be like. But I do you have these like, intense, like, I yeah. fucking hate them. I never want to see them again. They're disgust. I say the meanest shit about, <laughs> not good, guys, like, about, you know, people who are still in my life. And I've said <laughs> things about them that if they knew that I said that or thought that, I'd be gone. But I didn't really think that. It was just, like, my brain got hijacked. What do I do? Like, yeah. sh- should I feel bad about it? I can't stop it. You're... I, and, you are you have traits but you're you're like not you're like right outside the door of a a personality disorder but you don't have one because you're knocking on the door and like you know (laughs) obviously part of having one it's fun to have one because you it's like you're a fuck (laughs) when you if you get into a relationship with someone with a personality disorder and you're in one for a really long time you get what they call fleas which is you start to adapt the traits of someone with a personality disorder and I did that um, after I got out of a relationship with a borderline and I was a fuck. That was part of why I was, I got so good at dating was because like, I just, I just knew all, I, I could do all the tricks that the borderline did. Oh my but like, God, this is so true. You may have, um, fleas. Oh, you, got some fleas. you might have fleas, but, but <laughs> I don't think you have a personality disorder because you're far too empathetic and introspective. Like those two things do not com- combine with, Borderlines will go to therapy, but they won't change. They'll go to therapy just to affirm and to build themselves up. I don't think, I mean, yes, look, I'm, I, I want to just clarify. I'm speaking about borderlines right now like they're animals and they're not animals. There are plenty of borderlines who have been to therapy and are willing to change. And I know borderlines who like are, are a- absolutely amazing people. For, in order to do that, you need to go to therapy. You need to accept mm-hmm. therapy. You need to be like diagnosed as a borderline, and, want and then to change, and then do basically uh, uh, the work uh, neuro linguistic programming. You need to you you need yeah. to look at you need to do behavioral cognitive therapy where you go like mm-hmm. okay, everything in my being is telling me that I should turn on this person and hate them, and then you need to train yourself to be like. That's not right, even though that's exactly what I want to do. I need, I need to know that that's not how a, like a standard brain works or how it, or a good thing and fight against that until eventually you can train your brain to not be borderline anymore. And I've seen, I've seen it happen. Where Just like, like people can pick it up, you could probably drop it off. Yeah, you can drop it out. If it's much harder if you were born with this and like it's a trauma that is intrinsic into your the core of your like brainstem that like that's really hard but i it's possible and 
Just because you're diagnosed with borderline does not mean you can't change and can I and, say and something? Ameliorate those things. I love the word ameliorate. 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 It's a beautiful name for a little I'm girl. Name my um, daughter that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the Same way, can thought. I also just quickly say I had a song in this film called "Borderline the Film," and it's an excellent documentary directed by uh, Rebby Ratner, and you guys, you should check it out. It's really really good. Borderline. Why did the you film. say that name? Like anyone would know how to spell it. Rebby. 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 How do you Ratner. spell that? Uh, R e b b i e. I think. All right. Anyway, Rebby it's. It's good and it follows a borderline around uh, or a couple of them and it's so interesting in their therapy sessions and everything so you can learn more Ooh. about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is all like so fascinating. What I was like gleaming onto about what Brian was saying is that you have to want to change or that you have to be like, I don't want to be this way anymore. I was listening to, I'll just say this vaguely if anyone wants to bite, about someone saying recently in my life that they notice things about themselves, like their behavior. I don't relate to feeling out of control with the way I'm reacting to something, I guess. If, and, and you might be like, yes, you do, Nikki, all the time. So maybe enlighten me if I'm, if I'm wrong about this. I've never felt frustrated. Like, I hate the way I am and the things I like and the things I don't like and the level of talent I have, I fucking hate. And I wish all the time I could be different in that way. Like, I wish I liked hiking. I wish I liked, I wish I worked harder, like all of those things. But I'm never like, I'm so mad that I cried about this thing. I'm so, and, and yes, I've said before, like, I wish I could cry more, but it's, I've never um, been mad at my, like the way I react to something. And I feel like I've heard people say they're upset about the way that they react and they're like, wish they could react better. And I want to understand that. And is that a narcissist of me to never question the way I act? Like sometimes I'm like, oh, that was a little embarrassing, but I'm not like, I'm never so insanely frustrated by the way I've reacted. So potentially mm -hmm. maybe you are, you could just be an extremely high functioning narcissist who has learned how to do certain things to make people believe that you're not. So like, I don't think this is true, but it's, it could be that your empathy is not it real. <laughs> it's not real that your empathy no, is, that's not. A no way. is a behavioral trait I'm that you've trained like yourself. I'm eating meat and cheese at night. <laughs> yeah. Or no, or, you, or you're just like, I learned that I can get away with certain things if I then follow it up with extreme empathy. Or I learned that oh. um, as long as I mimic someone who's introspective, then uh, people won't believe that I have a personality disorder. No, so, I like, don't have could that. Be but that. that's what a narcissist I, would say is like, let's change the subject. Yeah. No, that doesn't no, sound anything think, like me. <laughs> I think what you're saying is, is consistent with like you let people off the hook and then you are also really good at letting yourself off the hook. So I think it's just you, yeah. you practice what you preach. Maybe that's it. Of I'm just never embarrassed by my like outbursts. Really, it's it's rare that I mean there's been there's been times, but um, I just like it already happened. So what am I gonna do? It's more about the things I don't do that I am filled with regret and mm. hatred for myself. Is all the things I don't say and the things I and just the things that I don't have. Like I'm I more have um like. I'm more fretting about that. But I've heard even like you guys speak to the fact that like, why do I let this thing derail me or something? Like, I guess I never, and I let things derail me all the time, but I'm never like, what can I do to not let this derail me? I feel inherently I'm right to be derailed. I am right mm. to hate that, that I don't have enough talent that Taylor Swift has. Why, why wouldn't I be a little upset and angry that I did not get the lottery in that way that she got the lottery? You know, like, and I know that's stupid because most people are not going to hit the lottery. Why spend your whole life being mad about it? But I know I'm right to be a little bit jealous that someone else got this thing that makes your life so much easier in my mind. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I'm not, I'm never like, why do I, I'm mad I feel that way. Um, and, and when I try to, when people try to fix that about me, like, accept who you are, it's, it's going in one ear and out the other because I know that I'm right to feel shortchanged in many ways. And I know that you're supposed to focus on what you have and, and maybe compare yourself to people who don't have those things. And that's supposed to make you feel better. And I do that as well, but it doesn't change the fact that I also compare myself to people who just have better bone structure than me or a better voice or, you know, 
whatever can can hold a pick properly and strum, which I'll never be able to do. I don't relate to. I know that I'm right. What do you mean? I know that I'm correct in feeling angry that I wasn't born prettier or whatever it is I'm upset about that day. Uh, it, I know it's stupid. I know that. I know that I'm prettier well, than other it people, be stupid and, and people correct. could be envious of me because, uh, or it could be foolish. But it's also, but it is correct because I want something and they have it. So why wouldn't I be correct in being jealous of that? I don't get that at all. At all. Really? <laughs> at all. It's like it doesn't compute. Like, how can something be foolish and correct? Like, it cannot be both. Um, yeah. I think it can like I can feel ridiculous that this is my feeling or I can feel like I know this is not it's you know not foolish embarrassing to admit I guess because Ah. I have so many riches and I was born with so much privilege and all of these things so it feels foolish in that way but it is also correct that there are people that have it way better off than me and I should be jealous of them that is not true okay that is just an opinion but not a fact but you're it, saying no, it it's like a fact. it's a fact. See, this it's, is the difference. It is 100% a hundred percent a fact. It's not mm. a fact. It cannot be proven as a fact, can it? What can't be? That I'm not good it, at guitar one, and someone else has more affinity no, that, for it and that, that I am should, frustrated by that? That one should be envious of another. That I is, think it is. If I is want to be a great guitar a player, fact. and that is my <laughs> biggest goal for myself ever is to be able to like strum efficiently and I do not have the ability to do that. No matter how much I practice, it doesn't get better. And there are people that just have naturally never struggled with strumming. It is a fact that I should be envious of them. No, it's not. Because that it's something not. I want, Anya. No, it's a, it's an opi- It's just you're a feeling. You just have this opinion, but it facts is not are a fact. Things. Think feelings <laughs> are facts. <laughs> no, it's not. And you have to compare it backwards fact. also. Because right. there are I, people who are worse than you. Who can't yes. even play as good as you play. Right. And I, and yes, I can feel grateful for that. But I also, th- at the same time, I can still be pissed off that I don't have sure. this thing. And I sure. am 100% entitled to that. And no one yes, can talk me out of it. Yes, your feeling is valid. Yes. Your feeling is valid. But saying that one should feel a certain way and that is a fact is preposterous. I guess the word should is the key yeah. f- phrase yes. here. Yes. There are but no shoulds. I- I'm sorry if you're doing the math. This person wants this thing. This other person has this thing. Therefore, that person should feel envious of that person. Would. No, that person's envy makes sense. Well, okay, I sure. should go to break and let's not keep talking about this because we're not going to come to an understanding because I know I'm right because I'm probably a closeted narcissist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish. All right, we're back. Let's get to Reddit dump. Let's do a segment. Can I just say before that, that that, that conversation was slightly triggering because that, I don't want to say slightly triggering. Never mind. I, yeah, didn't I, I that. actually like it. You can That's say some drama slightly on this activating. Pod. That's what my therapist it just told me. It activated me. Say. Um, because <laughs> yeah. um, some, a, a thing that I fought with uh, my one of my exes, a thing that I fought with her about all the time was the fact that just because you feel a certain way, doesn't mean that that doesn't change reality. You know, like, yes. and that's a, that's a sign of, uh, of borderlines that they always say, every borderline, and I don't care who you are, every borderline yeah. will say this phrase, I feel things more intensely than a normal person. And because of that, um, frequently that causes problems because they, they do feel this thing um, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it's connected to anything that actually happened or any sort of reality that's occurring. And so, but then what? What do you do with? Because my biggest thing is that people are always like, "You gotta like validate your feelings." And my whole childhood was, uh, no offense, mom and dad, if you're listening, but my feelings did not get heard in the way that I needed them heard because I had a lot of feelings as a child. As things I've come, I've paid thousands of dollars to have this diagnosed, so it's true, mom and dad. I did not have my feelings met i was if i cried about something it was like come off it what are you crying about yeah. or if i was angry about something you this is too much you are being ridiculous so now i am been told by therapists honor your feelings your feelings are valid your feelings are real so now i'm all fucked up because now Wait, i'm trying this is to- making so much sense to me now 
So mm-hmm. you you just like being like or feeling justified in the way that you feel yeah. is how you are protecting yourself, how you're protecting like the childhood From self who is not heard. Yeah, because like yeah, I'm so the only sense. one who can believe it. So I only have me to trust that this is real anger or real sadness yes. because no one else will or I I didn't have a and chorus of people saying, important. oh, wow, that is sad because it never, rarely was whatever I was crying about and not a reason enough to cry about it. Even into adulthood, I cry about things and uh, was met with, what are you crying about? You shouldn't, shouldn't have these emotions. So you so had to self-soothe, right? Like I have you to were... like double down on like, yes, it is. I, it is real. And yes. I'm the only one who believes in it. Does, I don't need your validation because that's the only way that I'm going to even be able to process this because otherwise I'll trust you and push it down still right so it has to that, be and that's to really really healthy to validate your feelings and be like this is totally valid no matter how i feel envy jealousy anger rage sadness this is a this is a real feeling but how is but that, that different than saying i should true. feel this way because it's like should take that word out of their vocabulary. It's just not helpful. Like so it. when this this validation <laughs> thing goes too far, you know how we because talk about it enneagrams. It means I'm following the instructions. I'm doing right. what a normal but, human would do. But so that, I, which is what, something I struggle with is like I'm different. So if I say the word should, it validates to me that I'm not crazy. Okay, let's change should to makes perfect sense. How is it that makes, different than should? <laughs> should is take an action, Nikki. You need to take an act. You ne- or like you <laughs> should is like God in the air with his finger to me. Like you should be jealous to be a good person. <laughs> like you should be envious. And it's just not helpful to be envious all the time. Like comparison is the thief of joy, right? Ooh. Shakespeare said it or something. So like hey, mommy, I feel really envious of Sally because she has more money than I have and we're poor. You should feel envious because wealth is something we all aspire to. That's not helpful. But like, oh, I totally get why you're envious. Yeah, Sally does seem to have a lot of stuff. But you know what we have? Sally's dad left them and they're divorced and Sally's mom is miserable. But we have a quite a happy family here and we have a dog. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She's it's like validate the child's feelings. Yes. Like, but do not tell them you should be envious. In fact, because then you're gonna spend your whole fuck you should spend your whole life being envious. When you grow right. up, you're gonna see supermodels that are really skinny. You should want to be skinny like them too. That's, you should have that an eating is disorder. The key difference is that you need to you want your feelings validated so that you're not gaslit. So that you're like, I am feeling this way. You don't want people to say like, you're not feeling this way or it's wrong to feel this way. You want right. someone to say, well, I understand how you could feel this way so that your feelings are validated. But the key difference between just validation and what like a borderline does is just because you feel a certain way does not mean that that justifies actions you might take based on those feelings. Those feelings, mm. those feelings might guide you you might feel angry at somebody and it's like, I understand why you feel angry, but that doesn't mean that what they did actually is just, a, it actually <laughs> should anger you. It's not a should. Right. It just reminded me of this joke mm. I was listening to. I'm like on a Louis C.K. tear right now. And I think that my favorite joke ever written, because it's, it's just the perfect mixture of dark and also a great idea. And like, you just can't help but laugh about it is that, if murder were legal, like you, everyone would do it. It would be happening all of the time. The only reason it's not happening is because it's not legal. And if people didn't murder, if the murder were legal and there, you met someone that was like, I've just never murdered anyone. You'd go like, ugh, God, I don't want to <laughs> hang out with that person. And he was like, most of the people being murdered would be children, by the way. People would just be ch- killing their children constantly. <laughs> it would be a problem. They would be like, we have to start cleaning up. If you murder your kid, you have to clean up your murdered kid. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, so. But it was just about like that feel. Like it reminded me of like, you should take action. and um. And yeah, I, I guess that's the that's the other hurdle that I come to is that when I'm feeling something, I want to, I, I feelings aren't enough. Then that's ridiculous. Then feelings, sh- if you're not going to do something with them, 
then they are stupid. Well, they inform you and of like, how I, you're... And then you're just being placated. Like, oh, you, oh, it's understandable. You feel this way. But you're kind of rolling your eyes like, Jesus Christ, she's fucking <laughs> losing her mind about this doll whose hair isn't straight or whatever I used to cry about as a kid. Like, there's still that like, oh, Nikki, that's so sad. But like looking at each other like, what the fuck is wrong with our child, EJ? Like, I would catch those glances. And that, I think, is where you're talk the where now I'm getting activated because you're like it doesn't the a- your action should not you didn't sh- you don't get to act on it and I want to act on it I e sob wildly and throw my body around a van a moving van because my <laughs> nothing Barbie wrong doesn't have crying straight hair. about it you sh- you should like the other day we had a friend who's very angry and she took Nikki's advice and listened to a Taylor Swift song and really loud and raged in her car and screamed to the song. And it was really cathartic for her. She didn't hurt anybody. She didn't yell at anybody. She didn't fire off any emails to bad blood. Together. And this mm-hmm. is why we can't have nice things. If and that's a healthy needs to let out their anger. use of anger. Like she got her feelings validated by all of us on the girls chat. Mm-hmm. And then she was able to express it in a healthy way. Yeah. You know, right. Because you don't have control. Not go murder three people and throw them into a bog. You don't have control over your feelings. <laughs> your feelings just come up from your subconscious. And so you can't say that someone feeling something is wrong or right or that you should or shouldn't feel a certain way. You don't have any control over it. They just come. But like imagine a scenario where you're driving your car and then someone cuts you off and then you feel so angry that you want to kill the other person. Yeah. You can't just go kill the other person because you feel angry. That was how Louis got into this bed. He's like, when I'm driving, it's the worst person I've ever. I'm just like, I'll fucking kill you. And it's like, (laughs) why? Because you had to go like, you had to push on the brake for two seconds. Yeah. Like, why does it elicit? And we're all driving these weapons around other weapons. It should be the time that we're most compassionate. Why does this time bring out the worst in us? Yeah. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be able to kill someone. I get that. Your, your, your um, emotions, even though they feel real and even if you feel them more than others, they do not justify your actions. Mm. Now it makes sense Unless to me why you, you say this phrase a lot. I should? know I'm right. You say, I know I'm right a lot. Like, I know I'm right about Matchbox 20. And if you guys, if anyone comes at me about Matchbox 20, try, I, you're just wrong. Or like Taylor Swift, well, yeah, you'll I say, bet. I know I'm right. I still and, think I'm right. Yeah. And like, I know I'm right to feel whatever we were talking about yes. earlier. Like, I know Jealousy, I'm right to envy. be. Yeah. And that's because what you just revealed today, which was so interesting, that you did not have your little childhood feelings validated. Truly yes. validated. So this is your adult way of being like, I'm not crazy. And I am like, that I might be the I'm reason right. you're a comedian. Self-parenting. I mean, yeah. right. you it's go self-preservation. You go and up on you are stage fucking wrong, and you but say, <laughs> <we love> you. <laughs> I'm not. That's the thing. I'm, I'm like having a narcissist time where it's like, you can say I'm wrong all you want. And I'm just like, poor Anya doesn't get it. That Matchbox 20 is the greatest thing Well, you've that's helped ever me been. with this before. Like I have, I have bad trauma around um, cheating. And it's like, I, I have these very valid feelings sometimes that are really painful that are like, I'm afraid of being betrayed or I'm f- afraid of being cheated on or I'm I'm like jealous envious of jealous of somebody and um and I just have to like be super gentle with myself and be like those are really valid feelings if I go to a place of like you're fucking nuts get over this like just be a cool girl stop with this it doesn't do anything like it just makes it worse but if I can just be like wow you had a lot of trauma so much trauma around this and it was not fair and it was not cool that helps to just be like, oh, there's, there's a lot in me that like needs healing and I need to be patient with that part of me. But then with the action that I, t- it's not like, and I'm right to feel this because all men are fucking cheaters. That's where I want to go with it. There's mm. a part of me that wants to go there. Like, and I know I'm fucking right because I have all this evidence. So mm. I am right that all men will cheat and you, and like all this shit. But it's like, no, the more <laughs> mature conclusion is, Deal with your feelings. They are valid, but deal with them in a healthy way. You know, try to trust trustworthy people. They are out there. You know, choose healthy relationships, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I relate to that black and white thinking of like, they're all like, I'm like, every woman that is regarded as the 
hottest woman is thin and has great bone structure and her skin isn't sagging off her face in the ways mine is. So I literally am horrific and should probably kill myself because what's the point if that's all you should aspire to be? Like that's where my mind goes to just kill yourself. If you yeah. just can't be the best or if, it, it, you know, in, in the lens that you're saying it, I if I felt the way about cheating, I'd be like, you're never going to find a man who is, it, all men cheat, all men want to cheat. Even if they don't cheat, they want to. And even that bothers me. So I'll just never fucking ever trust a man. Right. Um, but there's always exceptions. There are people that find um, other, like, and, and my point it always is with like, <laughs> People are like, but there are men who are attracted to other things. I'm like, but they'd rather have something else. And I never want to be an exception because the guy's like, well, I can't get Emily Ratajkowski. So I guess I'll settle on Nikki Glazer. Like if you want someone else more than me, I don't want to be with you. I want to be the number one thing you could ever imagine achieving in your life. And there's no one better than me, which is insane because there's always going to be someone more attractive than you, especially as we age. Dude. Final thought. Yeah. The word you just said, you have to discuss with your therapist because that is so telling. You said achieve. If yes. You said achieve about Nikki Glaser, a guy saying, I'm going to achieve Nikki Glaser. Yes. I want to be. That's why I don't mind if my boyfriend is attracted to other women or is intimate with other women because if he stays with me, I I'm constantly proving to myself that I am the best and that he hasn't left me for her yet. So like he can go sample other cakes, but I'm the one he's eating late at night. Like I'm the one he's taking home. <laughs> You're and the so trophy. It's constantly, yeah. So I don't so you care if he does other stuff because it's like, that's just stuff to see if he wants it, but guess what? He doesn't. And I keep getting validated. That's why I like that. It keeps validating that I am number one. Whereas if we go through a, like I did a joke last night on stage that was like, I'm in a, been in a 10 year relationship pretty much, you know? And um, I was just talking about how like age has affected my body, especially like my vagina and stuff. And like things that just don't look the same lately and they don't feel the same. And it's, Ani gave me the line of it's getting jowls. And um, <laughs> it's getting jowly down there. And uh, it's starting to look like my grandma in the final years of her life, like my <laughs> vagina at 39. So it's true. It like reminds me of Mimi and I miss her every time I look down. But um, <laughs> I was saying like, if something happened with me and Chris, I am now like, uh-oh. Like I looked at my vagina the other day and I go, I wouldn't want someone new to see this. He doesn't notice because it's been over time, but there's no way I could present this right now the way it is without getting some kind of, my mind goes, if Chris breaks up with me, I have to get vaginal surgery because I can't have someone new see this. So I need Chris to constantly go out and see new pussies in my mind now to like validate that he still wants this one because I think he's just gotten used to it. Mm. And I don't want someone who's just like, uh, this is all I can get. I guess I just have to stay with it because I'm locked in. Another reason I don't like marriage because it feels like you have to stay with me because now there's a ring on your finger and you made all this pledge in front of all your family and friends and we spent thousands of dollars. So that's why you're with me as opposed to he's with me because he could be with anyone at any time and he keeps choosing me. Being a girlfriend makes it feel like I am fighting for something and achieving something more than if I got married. It would feel like an achievement on that day. Like I did it, but past that I'd be like, oh, I just locked him in a cage and now I'm acting like he wants to stay. He doesn't, Mm. now he can't leave. He's locked in. That stuff doesn't make me feel like I achieved snaring this animal. It's it's trapped. It doesn't want to be with me. You trapped him in your pussy. (laughs) You locked him in there. The jowls. <laughs> <of> the <pussy. laughs> but this is like, uh, you don't do this with your girlfriends. What do you mean? You don't have an achievement paradigm with your girlfriends. You're not There's like, a little bit of that. Like, I feel, um, I gotta I'm get just the best so confident friend, the that most. I'm the best friend possible. And I, you all can meet each other and find other versions of what I offer in a friendship in other people. But Wait, I do like, feel I there is a narcissistic <laughs> attempt. No, I, I there's nothing I feel more accomplished about in my life than the ability to collect amazing girlfriends <laughs> and to, to nurture amazing friendships that both support me and that I feel uh, that I can support them. There's nothing more in my life that I'll ever be more proud of. Put it on my gravestone. I'm the best at making girlfriends. No question about it. It's true. Uh, 
It, it, but I, I know, don't- but the love, it's like love is not a, it, the way the words you're using it's a, are, <laughs> but it's like a collect. <laughs> what, collect girlfriends? Yeah. No, like, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to be, I'm saying it for humor. Okay, okay, you okay, know. good. But, but I mean, like with Chris, it makes, it's a, I don't know. Like, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself that you have I love to be it. the best. You do? I love it. I want it. I don't want him. I but want it, to constantly be the best. What about Because that is porn? In, in me. You see a porn? Huh? What if he sees a p- pussies in porn? Is that enough? And he looks at oh. those pussies and he goes, ah, I want glaze. You know, is that Yeah, fine? that actually is enough. I do, I do like him to watch porn, honestly, yeah. to just have an idea of what's out there and what he could be getting, yet he still chooses me. It, th- that is... A hundred percent correct that it it turns me on to hear even when I hear him on the radio be like, yeah, there's been some attractive uh, Jeopardy uh, contestants lately, yes. or like you know the, the, there was some headline about the hottest Jeopardy uh, contestant ever. They were reading about it, and Chris is like, Chris watches Jeopardy every day, and he's like, there have been some really good looking ones recently. It was like the most banal thing. He was just being very polite, but like he didn't even say good looking. He's like some really impressive you know, physically impressive people on the show. <laughs> and I like wrote him, like, I heard you say this. And I was like, I loved it so much. And then Kristen Bell came up and he goes, man, she is something. And I was like, oh, yes. Like, I don't know why <laughs> that turns me on because I see that he, now I know he is in tuned with other things. He's not given up. Mm. He's still noticing other women are attractive. That means uh, he's constantly calibrating. I got to keep up. I like that. I I never want to, I don't like being complacent or feeling like I just, and I know a lot of people are probably like, this is so sad. Nikki never feels safe. I a hundred there. The truth is I'm probably a narcissist because I know there's no one better for me than him. He could break up with me and end up with someone. I'd be like, he's always going to think about me. Even though that's not the truth. And there are men in my past that I, I, I've i said that about and I don't feel that way. I'm like, no, that person's better for them. They never think about me at all. But for Chris, I'm certain I'm the best he could do. I think that's confidence, <laughs> not narcissism. But you said he's the best. I know I'm confident that he that he is the best person for me. Didn't you just say that? I'm the best person for him. Oh. I, I'm confident right now that he's the best person for me. And I'm constantly calibrating that too, uh, to be quite honest. Yeah, just it like, sounds like a good match. Yeah, and it's like cuz I want I want to be with the best. I want the best. It's almost like you guys are uh in a standstill in an arm wrestling match and nobody He's can not slam like this, the other though. down. He would hate this. He's not like this. This is this is an invention in my own mind. He has no <laughs> idea that I mean, it's not like I'm constantly like is this guy better? Is this guy better? Not like that. I'm just like I and it's not even about better, better looking, taller, whatever, more money. I don't weigh those things. It's like could someone love me more? Mm. That is, if if someone comes into my world that I'm like, and they, but they can't get in because I'm our, they, they couldn't even get the, in the door right now because I'm in a relationship. So there's not a good chance of someone proving that. But if he starts to show signs of not loving me enough, uh, if he were to suddenly start saying cruel things, which he's never done in his whole life, or just um, ignoring me, being affectionateless, things like that, I 100% would start looking for someone else to love me more. But Mm -hmm. so that is, and I think everyone should. Is that crazy? I don't think that you should just settle just because you're married, like for whatever that person's willing to give you. Well, if the person's no longer giving you what you need in the relationship, and then they're also unwilling to put in any effort to give you those things. Yes, you would have to address it with them and say, hey, I've noticed this is a thing that's happening. Because it could be like they're going through a depression or something like that. But yeah. Yeah, um, their teeth hurt. Oh, their teeth hurt. I mean, that is a huge thing. Brian is in constant pain. He's at a seven most of the time in pain uh, from one to ten. Uh, and he, I'm feeling okay right now. I haven't eaten yet. But, what are you at right now? Uh, four. four. Okay, that's not bad. That's yeah, not bad. That's not bad. If people have chronic pain and you are in my life, please let me know. Because otherwise, I just think you're a dick. Not <laughs> that I ever thought Brian was a dick, but I just think uh, I'll go, well, oh, Brian's like bored with me right now or whatever. I And these aren't yeah, things I've actually so thought, true. but I will just take it personally. But when someone's uh-huh. like, I'm I'm cramping right now really bad. I My back hurts, whatever it is. I suddenly, all of the things, I'm like, why is this person such a grump? Like it, it, it suddenly alleviates it for me. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And then now I'm like, I don't take anything personally, but people, man, 
pain. Well, I'm not someone who has lived in chronic pain, but I've said it on the podcast before. If you do, I have so much empathy. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you go to work. I don't know how you dress your kids in the morning. I don't know how you Not a narcissist. Are... What? Not a narcissist. <laughs> I'm, you're I'm, honestly, <laughs> the way I feel about people in pain, I had a dream last night that my friend was in pain and I was just like helping them and like holding them and getting them things and like just like rubbing their head, like patting their head gently because they were in pain. And like, I, I'm, I'm mm. like, uh, Brian is someone in my life that's in pain a lot. And then my other friend, Bill is currently in a lot of pain and I have to be around him a lot. And I'm like, it's hard for me to be around them because I'm so like, Give me some of it. Like, can I please take some Aww. of it? Like, because I'm also like, and then I get a narcissistic uh, thought of like, man, I suck. If I had that, I wouldn't be here. And he's here. He's better than me. And then I start hating <laughs> myself because I'm like, I'm such a pussy. I could never do what they're doing. And then I make it about myself. <laughs> no, How no. do you do it? How do you get well, through it? I just want to say like, let that be, it should be a life lesson that everybody takes into account is never, ever take anything personally because it is almost never about you. If someone's acting like a dick or being a little short or whatever, trust me, it's not about you. So like, yeah, you, you, what I say about people who are in chronic pain or stuff, there's no excuse. It's just like when you feel things in a certain way. My pain right. feelings are just emotional feelings that are manifesting through physical symptoms. Because I feel that way, that's not an excuse to be a dick. That doesn't excuse any type of behavior. Mm -hmm. You still have to be your best self despite that. And so, um, but on the other side of it, do not take it personally. If someone's a dick to you, you can hate them. You can be like, I don't think that I don't want to be around that person. They're going to act like that all the time. But like, know that it's not something that you did. It's not about you. It's about them every single time, even if they're not in pain. Physically. I said this the other day in mixed company because Brian and I were hanging out with some people and I noticed that Brian, there's someone that we were hanging out with that was like in a bad mood because of pain. And I, and Brian shared something and I said, uh, yeah, I had that same experience. And, um, and I go, just no, and b both me and my girlfriend were like, just no, it is not like, it, it's don't take it personally. And he was like, Oh, I, I don't, I would, I would, there was no, even <laughs> Brian, this is the difference maybe between men and women, uh, if I'm going to be more uh, obtuse about it, but me and this girl were like, so ready to just convince him that it wasn't his fault. And he was like, no, I know, I know that I'm, I'm not scared of this person. I don't, I'm not mad at them. I don't think I did something wrong. Um, they're just in pain. Like it was just a little awkward, but that doesn't mean I'm going to like feel sad about it all day. And I'm like, what would that be like? I got offended yesterday when I went to the cafe and the girl who I ordered my coffee from was a little bit short with me. I couldn't get out of my head for like four hours. This girl I'm never going to see again. She doesn't even work there. The girl that I like was just not there. And this girl was like, I'll have your coffee in a second because I accidentally grabbed the wrong one. And then she forgot to put a stevia in it. And I go, hi, can I, can I get a stevia? And she should have said, oh, sorry, I forgot. But instead she goes, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, because I asked for one before and you remember it because I even said one and a half because you were like, do you want two? And I said, get yeah, one and a half. What the heck? And I was like, was that weird? And we had a little laugh about it. Or I, I guess I did. Oh, and then she's bad. like, and then she was uh, rude to me. I could, I'm still angry about it. But Brian was just like, oh yeah, I wouldn't, I don't take things personally. It was just, so, how do you not do that? Have you always been that way, Brian? Um, in a situation like that, I mean, I can totally understand when someone's got full of stress and they just kind of snap at you and it's like, well, that's not definitely not about me. I don't know. I guess it doesn't stay with you all day. Like, even though, you know, cognitively, it's not like you still feel guilty. I should have done something differently. Now they don't like me mentally, like, da, 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 da. like mentally. It might stay with me all day just to be like, uh, uh, just to comp just to say, like, can you believe that? But I'm certainly not reeling over it. You and know. you're not making a judgment about yourself and like, no. I'm a piece of shit. No, I'm all, I, I'm kind of, I, I calculate like, well, now knowing that this person might act that way when they're in high stress situations, what can I do to, um, in a situation like this, I do not walk on eggshells in a relationship like this, but in a, like a romantic relationship, but I'm thinking like, okay, so what can I do in order to, um, make that not happen again? Um, when interacting with me to uh, taking that Logical into account. Logical boy yeah. brain. Yeah. Oh, God. 
I wish that for every woman listening to this podcast right now, a little bit <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, it's my worst, what, worst character flaw. Taking the amount of personally. times I see myself and my friends derailed for weeks on end from <sighs> anything productive they could be doing because one person got mad at them at one point that had nothing to do with them, and I can see it so clearly because I'm not in it, is... There's years of people's lives wasted every day from short interactions that have nothing to do with them. Please, God, stop wasting your life worrying about the people being mad at you. Oh, it wait, the biggest I'm waste sorry. of time. Go write a poem. I what? forgot to mention that also um, every uh, morning I've been slipping a little bit of arsenic into his coffee. Just like a little bit. <laughs> so it will come back. So to it is him. your fault. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he, I will get my vengeance. Uh, just one and a half packets of arsenic. Yes. <laughs> we gotta go. Thank you for listening to the pod this week, you guys. We really uncovered a lot about myself today. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you next week. Don't be cut. And just feel your feelings. Don't murder someone. <laughs>